All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jesse Meckling, the Director of Education at the Center for Coastal Studies in Province of Mass, and this is Facebook Live. Welcome. Um, today, um, this is uh, the series is Cool Marine Animals That I Have Seen. Um, this particular week has no theme. It's just kind of strange, cool animals that I haven't talked about before. And today's species is a species um, that um, like many of the species um, in this series, I had not heard of before I first saw it. Um, it's very cool. It's a uh, tropical species only found in certain parts of the world, as in many of these cases. Um, it's found in the Indo-Pacific region and is a member of the shark family, a very small shark. It's not a particularly big one, um, one that you're least likely to see on um, Shark Week. Although um, you may, because these are very, very cool sharks. Um, and the shark is a shark that is has a particularly cool uh, trait, and that is it is able to come out of the water and actually walk on land or on coral. And of course, I am talking about the epaulet shark. So let's get going with our presentation. Um, so the epaulet sharks. Uh, this, these are small sharks. Uh, they are named for a dark spot um, that is near uh, their head, which resembles uh, epaulets or uh, oriental uh, ornamental military um, decorations or, or badges. And I saw epaulet sharks um, on a group of islands called Raja Ampat, which is located in Indo um, eastern Indonesia, uh, north of Papua, um, nearly every night that I was there. These uh, small sharks would come up um, on the edge of the beach. The waves would push them up, and sometimes the waves actually push them out of the water onto the sand. Um, really neat to see. Um, one of the cool things about these is, is uh, four species were discovered, uh, have been discovered since 2008. Uh, they actually belong to an order of sharks that include whale sharks, um, and they're listed as species of least concern, but we'll talk some about that later. So they are found um, in a um, particular area of the world. Um, they are uh, in a family of sharks called uh, long-tailed carpet sharks or bamboo sharks, um, which there are 19 species. Um, nine of those species are the epaulet sharks or the walking sharks. And as I mentioned, four of those have only recently been discovered uh, since 2008. Uh, they're find, found in tropical waters um, here. You can see around northern Australia, Papua, and eastern um, eastern Indonesia. Uh, Raja Ampat is located just north of Papua. They're on the western side. Uh, epaulet sharks are found in shallow water to a maximum depth of, depth of 50 meters or 160 feet. Um, but they're often seen in water that's barely uh, deep enough to cover their bodies. As I mentioned, Four new species of these sharks have been found recently, um, suggesting that in this area in Indonesia, they've been found in, in certain bays in Indonesia, suggesting that um, evolution among sharks is happening there relatively quickly, um, and there could be speciation happening in this, uh, in this region. Uh, as one uh, researcher I read put it, uh, this is like the Galapagos for sharks. Um, these sharks are thought to have, these new species are thought to have evolved over the past uh, 9 million years, which may seem like a lot, but compared to other shark species um, like the six gill, uh, which is a, hasn't, apparently hasn't evolved for over 160 million years. So it's quite interesting, um, and it's interesting that they might find more and more of these species um, as scientists continue to look in these areas. Uh, these sharks are small species. Uh, they typically uh, only grow to about 70 to 90 centimeters or 27 to 35 inches long. Um, the longest one recorded was measured at 107 centimeters or 42 inches. You can see here it has a slender body with a short head. You can see that that brown patch uh, just past its front flipper. Um, and it has paddle shaped paired fins. You can see those there. Um, their coloring, as you might, uh, might imagine, provides ca camouflage from predators. While that dark spot is hypothesized to act as an eye spot, so predators might see that and think it's a larger animal. 
epaulette sharks are amazing because they've evolved the um, ability to walk along the seafloor um, using a crawling motion. Um, this movement is a possi possible. I go forward. Is a possible um, evolutionary adaption um, in their fins um, that have increased their range of motion. So these front flip fins that you can see there are kind of flat and wide, um, and they um, functionally work as feet. And even though they can swim, um, these are these sharks are often seen um, walking along the seafloor across the across the reef. Um, the epaulette shark is an opportunistic predator of um, benthic crustaceans, so crabs, worms, shrimp, small bony fish. Um, and unlike most sharks, uh, they may actually chew their food, uh, which I find very interesting uh, for up to five to 10 minutes. Um, they prefer tidal pools, coral flats, and uh, particularly staghorn corals. And they're mostly nocturnal. Of course, I saw them um, on the beaches, but while I was there, uh, divers who went at night at out at night also saw them diving at night. Um, they're, they're thought that they remain concealed under the coral during the day. Um, one of the coolest adaptations of these sharks um, is because they hunt in shallow water, um, they, with potential limited opportunities to breathe, um, and quite often they get stranded in tide pools as the tide goes out. The epaulet shark has um, evolved to have a, an ability to withstand uh, being uh, with less oxygen for a long amount of time. Uh, they can't actually breathe out of water, but it can survive 60 times longer without oxygen than humans can. Uh, they can survive for over three hours in conditions with less than 5% oxygen without any loss of behavioral responsiveness. How they do this is their blood pressure and heart rate drop, um, and by half and blood vessels in the body constrict, concentrating oxygen in the brain. Um, and they can survive, uh, they slow their, their breathing and their heart rate um, and basically power down. And this allows them to survive in these, these uh, tidal pools um, with very limited amounts of oxygen, which is super cool. Um, the species is oviparous, uh, meaning they lay eggs, the females depositing eggs from August to December. Um, they lay two egg capsules, sometimes four, um, every two weeks, every 14 days, producing a total of 20 to 50 eggs per year. Um, that's it. Um, the eggs, the young, emerge after 120 to 130 days of incubation at a length of roughly 14 to 16 centimeters, five uh, and a half to 6.3 inches. And it's thought that males and females both mature around seven years of age. Uh, epaulette sharks are listed as a species of non-concern by the IUCN. Um, they're limited if any threats to the species from from fishing. They're not they're not really caught um, in any fisheries. Um, the main threat of these sharks is is uh, habitat destruction, especially around uh, New Guinea. Uh, but interesting, a recent study found that warming sea temperatures. Uh, could affect the growth of these fish. Uh, a study that's coming out of the New England Aquarium where these fish are actually in the, um, the touch tank. Um, there's a shark touch tank at the New England Aquarium and they have epaulet sharks there. Um, this study is looking at um, increasing uh, warming sea temperatures on the development of, of the eggs um, and the embryos uh, and the young of these sharks. Um, and they, it's been observed in other sharks that warmer temperatures can cause eggs to hatch faster, um, where the emerging pups are smaller in size, possibly making them um, more vulnerable to predators um, and also um, changing their ability to, to forage for food. Um, additionally, um, if temperatures rise above a certain threshold, um, the embryos may not survive to hatching at all. So, so climate change is certainly thought to be a, a potential threat to these species. Um, and it was once thought that because they can, they sort of tolerate different environmental conditions by by being in tide pools and and sort of coming out of water, or coming in low water areas, that they weren't susceptible to te rising temperatures. But this new study is is uh, changing that. Um, and another um, another potential threat with these is with the new species being discovered. Uh, these uh, it's 
possible that these new species have very limited ranges um, and that their uh, habitat in those areas, if there was habitat destruction or changes due to climate change um, in those areas, particular warming and um, warming in particular areas that could affect these new species um, in a uh, uh, small range. So that's all for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning about the walking shark, um, the Evelet shark, very, very cool. Um, I was <clears throat> certainly, um, I, I, I heard about them um, right before I saw them. And um, it, it was a very, definitely a very cool thing uh, to know about. Um, and as with many of the animals, a number of the animals that I've talked about um, during the series, pygmy seahorses, octopuses, unit ranks, even orcas, uh, scientists amazingly are still discovering new species around the world. Uh, and it's amazing how little we know sometimes about this part of the world that covers uh, more than 70% of the surface. Um, how many new species, not just, at, not just ones at great depth, but in plain view, are there out there waiting to be discovered? Um, and this area of the world particularly is, is one of those areas where new species seem, seemingly are being discovered all the time. Um, is what makes all these species very cool marine animals to see. So, um, whoa. so that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed.